It's time to wrap up the distillation section. I'm going to go through these things. And the last thing here, that's a student solution to a problem, which is loaded with different errors that students usually do at exams. And it's your task to find all those errors. So we have talked about equilibrium stages. And we have said that that's a theoretical construct where we assume that the liquid leaving that equilibrium stage is in perfect equilibrium with the vapor leaving. So if you plot in an xy diagram the x of the liquid leaving the composition and the y the composition of the gas in an xy diagram you find that point on the system curve. You need mass balances and energy balances to calculate your way through the column. On each day you need an energy balance to keep track of how the liquid fluxes changes. But actually we have assumed that the liquid fluxes are constant above the feed and below the feed, but they might be different above the feed compared to below the feed. Uh, and then the operating lines become straight lines in an XY diagram. Now, you can compare these equilibrium stages with the continuously stirred tank reactor. This is an advanced question. Can you have equilibrium in a continuously stirred tank reactor? No, you can't. And this is why. Think back of reversible reactions. You have a forward reaction rate and a backward re reaction rate. At equilibrium, the net reaction rate is zero. The forward and the backward reaction rates are the same. And if the net reaction rate is zero, then nothing happens, right? But you can be very, 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 very close to equilibrium, but you can't be perfectly at equilibrium. OK. These equilibrium stages, are they physical trace? No, they are not. You always need more physical trace than you need equilibrium stages. And we have used overall tray efficiency, some kind of average efficiency, to go from equilibrium stages to physical trace. What about the feed location? Well, when you draw the vertical lines, when you draw these triangles, you draw the line to the mass balance, to the operating line. To draw as few as possible, to what operating line should you draw? Well, after you po uh, pass the point where the two operating lines intersect, then it shifts which uh, operating line is closest and which is furthest away from the from the system curve. And if you always draw to the line that is furthest away, then you can draw bigger triangles. So when you step from above, as soon as you pass over the point where the two operating lines intersect, you shift to drawing the line to the lower. So that from that you get the optimal field location. So what if you have a suboptimal field location? Well, then you figure out where uh, you actually have your field location. The tricky part is that you need to know it expressed in equilibrium stages, since the triangles you draw in Macabre Thiele's graphical method are equilibrium stages, not physical trace. But if you know that, then draw so many triangles uh, towards the upper operating line as you, as you really have, and then switch to the lower. Uh, and then you will need more triangles, like in this diagram here. Equilibrium stages, we need you to calculate with one decimal point. And how do you do that? Well, there are two different ways, and we teach you one in this course. Uh, you take the horizontal line of the triangle you're drawn, and then you go immediately above the point where you want to end. And then you compare that distance with the full distance. And you do the same way for for the feed location and for the total number of trays. In this demo, I'm using a program where you, instead of setting XD and XW, you set the operating conditions. So we have how many ideal stages we have above the feed and below the feed, and then it calculates 
xt and xw for us. So this is simulating a real um, column or using the same kind of simplifications we've done before. So we have three ideal stages above the feed. So one, two, three, and then we shift to lower. So this is a suboptimal feed location, right? We can change that to optimal feed location. And then we see that xd actually increased a bit and xw decreased a bit. Okay, what happens if we change feed condition? Well, we can change Q, for example, to zero. That means that this line will instead go horizontal. And if we keep the lines in the positions we have uh, with the same slopes, well, then we're going to go out there and we need to do a smaller triangle. And then we need to move things around a bit. So what happened now? XD decreased. And XW also decreased. And you can play around this uh, in your mind. Uh, if you if you set the reflux ratio and you set the boil up ratio, then you actually set the slopes of the operating lines, and they must still intersect each other at uh, a point on the Q line. And the Q line is fixed, and you just have to move around these ones until they fit. And the problem is that you still have to draw exactly seven triangles. So that's a real hassle to do by hand. Uh, how low reflex ratio can we have? Well, uh, if we set to zero now, uh, that doesn't work, right? No. But if we set Q to one and reflex ratio to zero, it actually worked. Why is that? Well, this is a setup where you actually have the feed coming in as a liquid at the top. Now you don't need a condenser. OK, let's play around with some other things. Let's increase the reflex ratio. You see now that the XD here, that's 0 0.56. Let's increase the reflex ratio. Now XD moved away from the feed uh, composition. And it moves even further away. And the more we increase the reflux ratio, the further away XD is from XW. And the same thing with the boiler pressure. If we change that, let's lower that to 2. Then XW comes closer to the feed. Let's increase it. Then it comes further away. So total reflux, then, uh, you, I mean, we, we can increase this a bit. Let's see how much the program copes with. Yeah, what, what happens now is that you get a XD that's really, really close to 100% uh, in this case, since we now uh, have these other things set. Uh, and that might not be that interesting, but so the higher reflux ratio you have, the higher XD you will have uh, in a running setup. Calculating the number of physical traits is an important step in a design calculation. And we won't go through this in this course, how you do the next step. The next step is money. How much money will, will it cost to run the thing? And how mu much money will it cost to invest? Now. We will look at the reflux ratio and the cost. There is a minimum reflux ratio, right? So we can't design anything with a lower re reflux ratio than R min. What about the operating expenditure? Well, if we increase the reflux ratio, every single molecule will stay longer in the system. So we will have larger fluxes going downwards, and thus we need to evaporate more. The energy we need for evaporation increases with the reflux ratio. But what about the size of the thing? The width. The higher the reflux ratio is, the less trays we need, right? So it must start out with a decreasing trend with increasing reflux ratio. But in the end, if the reflux ratio is infinite, if everything goes back, then we don't produce anything. 
So the higher we get, uh, the, the larger, the wider the distillation column must be. So thus we get a curve that looks something like this. And if we combine the two, we get somewhere an optimum reflux ratio. So in our course, we have talked about the minimum reflex ratio, and we have talked about the minimum number of trays you need. But there is also an optimum reflux ratio, but that has to do with money, and we won't do any such calculations. Let's look at the student solution of a problem. And you have the numbers here, and you have the student answers. What are the errors the student has done? Try to solve this problem yourself and see where the student goes wrong. And the student goes wrong in so many places that if you answer like this on exam, you will, won't get a single point. So there are numerous things wrong here. And when I correct exams, I, I only give deductions once per error. So if uh, you do something wrong and then the, your further calculations become wrong because of your first error, I still look at what you've done and see if your continuation is good. So uh, the first thing is that this line here is long, wrong. The upper operating line is wrong. So what a student has done here is to forget to multiply with xd. If you have uh, x equals zero, then the, uh, the y value for the upper operating line is xd divided by r plus one. And uh, you get 0 0.4 if you, if you forget xd and just put one there instead. B, well, the thing that's wrong there is that the q line is wrong. It is a liquid feed at its boiling point, and that should be a vertical line. C, the lower operating line should intersect the diagonal in the point xw, but in this case, the student has drawn the lower operating line down here, and that's, that's simply wrong. D is a slightly related problem. When you draw the triangles, you should always draw them to the operating line, uh, but here the student has drawn them to, to the diagonal instead. If, uh, perhaps because the student realized that there's something is wrong here. Uh, I don't know. This, this happens sometimes in students' answers. Uh, e, the student says that the optimum feed location is 2.64. That can't be right. If you see here, uh, if you go directly above that, that's clearly less than half the distance from here to here, uh, compared to there to there. Uh, so that must be less than 2.5, right? And there is another problem here. 2 times 64, if you divide that with overall, tr uh, overall tray efficiency, 0 0.5, you get more than 5 then you should round that up to the nearest integer, and that would be 6, not 5. G, 5.5. Uh, well, the first thing is actually you have a reboiler. So 5.5, you need to deduct uh, 1 from there so to get 4.5. Uh, and then 4.5 divided by 0 0.5, that's 9, not 11. Uh, but yeah, five point, the, the point 0.5 thing is right because that's, that's directly above there. So these are so many errors that uh, if you do these many errors, you don't get a single point on the distillation task. That I can promise you.